So the most investors since the global financial crisis, which is Lehman, think that inflation will be lower in the next year. Lower inflation expectations. Very low. Well, if you think inflation expectations are low, that means you think interest rates are going to come down, which is also interesting. Now, when you take all of this and put it together, it's all about sentiment. And based on these numbers, all time, all time, these are surveys, all time, how the CEOs feel right now. Based on sentiment, we're likely going to see a huge rally in stocks in the coming weeks. And we're seeing that. I've seen it, especially in crypto. The good names are up 30%, 40% from their highs in crypto. Because there's a lot of good names in crypto. A lot of it's shit. Celsius. We saw you know, BlockFi had a little bit of trouble. Lending and, and you know craziness and Voyager. You see Silvergate's numbers? Those numbers are great. That stocks off tremendously. Again, it's down a lot. Crypto's gotten killed. But there's a lot of good names within crypto. Bitcoin and Ethereum are not going anywhere. But if you're looking at sentiment, I've never, I've never seen it this bearish in my career. And while things are bad, I'm not sitting here sugarcoating it. You know, I was predicting inflation 18 months ago, 12 months ago, telling you guys, you know, please learn how to buy puts, buy a money flow trader newsletter. If you did and anyone's in that, and Ginia, what she's doing in that newsletter is insane. I feel like she's logging 100% winner every couple of weeks. You would be making a fortune in that newsletter. Basically betting on stocks and the markets coming down and you just need probably a 15%. The market come down 15% and you're making two, three, four X times your money. Shooting fish in a barrel. You could have picked anything because the markets across the board outside of energy are down tremendously since January. And some are down 50, 60, 70%. So I'm not sugarcoating this. I'm not sugarcoating inflation. Things are not too good. You know, there's a recession coming, no matter where you want to time it or how you feel. I mean, we're currently, I believe we're in a recession already. And technically, you could say, oh, I don't know, not real. I mean, that's the way we feel that you're seeing the markets come down. People feel like this is a recession. We're close to a recession. So if things are bad, you have to look at the market. Stocks are down reflecting a lot of these risks that are no longer surprises, which is key. Remember, the biggest threat to stocks is uncertainty. If you listen to me for 30 years, that's what I've been saying. Uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty is the enemy. That's why the market's been all over the place. That's why we went down 11 out of 12 straight weeks because no one knew what the hell the Fed was doing. The Fed didn't even know what it was doing. Total 180 on interest rates. It's transitory. It's transitory. You know, It's coming down. It's going to be 2%, 9%. .9%. I mean, you can't get more wrong than that. Supply chain uncertainty. Why is it taking so lockdown uncertainty? Still with China. War. You know, what's Russia going to do in Ukraine? How is it going to end? Uncertainty, uncertainty. These are risks we see clear as day now. We're talking about Russia shutting off gas to, to, to Germany and other places in Europe. We see the uncertainty with China. Yes, they're locked down in Shanghai and back and forth, but we're pretty close to done with that. I think we look at the statistics and, you know, we're perfectly fine here in the U.S., most places stop wearing masks. Most places get it. We know who to protect. We understand the risk now of COVID. If you're over 60 with underlying conditions, get vaccinated. It's very important. Most people are vaccinated now. People are getting COVID. It's not that bad. It's, you know, a cold for most people. No more masks on airplanes. That fear is gone. But we're seeing these risks clear as day now. We know where the Fed's going with interest rates. And could things get worse? Could inflation start surging from the levels again? Yes. I mean, data shows, real-time data is showing that we're definitely moderating. So, of course, and if we do see that, we're going to see it show up in a lot of data. We'll see commodities surge. You see you know, copper bounce back tremendously. It was at 450, 475, whatever it was, to 325. Goes back to 4, 425, 450. Okay, fine. If oil goes to 135, we'll see it. But right now, today, at these levels where stocks are trading, you have to start picking away. I mean, the next two or three months is going to be crazy volatile. Look what happened in the last week. I just told you what happened in the last week. It's crazy. Banks totally out of favor. Get out of the, 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 the cruise lines. The little travel stocks. Now look at them surge. The 50-day moving averages, all the cruise lines are surging right now. See Delta, a lot of these other companies, airlines bounce off their lows. I mean, you can't see Delta trading at levels that is trading 
during the worst period of COVID. They have record revenues. Yes, their margins are hurting. Yes, they need pilots. But they would, 90% of their revenue was shut off. That's the level it's trading at right now, which is insane. When you look at these valuations of banks and, and so many companies, not technology, still seeing a lot of technology stocks trading at over 30 times forward earnings. We're not in a growth market anymore. The overall P is, what, 15, 16? It was 21. You're taking that growth component out. But when I look at this market, you have to be long going into September. You have to be. Because the Fed, they're definitely going to raise rates. Right? They're going to raise rates. And if you look at this next meeting, it's probably going to be at 75 basis points. But let's look at the September meeting. Because right now, we're seeing what they're doing is working. We're seeing with commodities, we're seeing it at inventory levels, we're seeing it. I mean, spending is shifting different areas, but we're seeing it. We're seeing inflation moderate. Simply from energy prices, which is, you know, everyone gauges inflation. That's the number one thing we want to see. And it's come down. I mean, 130 to what, 98, 90, whatever we are in oil and, and gasoline prices are down 15% from their highs, 12% from their highs. So we're seeing it. But when you're going into that September meeting, maybe they raise by 50 basis points. I don't know how much they're going to raise by. Maybe 25, 50, who knows? What I do know is is a very strong probability Powell is going to say that inflation is definitely moderating. And we're going to hold off raising rates in the future. And let's see how this plays out. Because it's not like, oh, we raise and this, it's going to continue. It's a drag. It's going to continue. This is how higher interest rates filter through the market. You're going to see wage growth take a hit. See more and more layoffs. The unemployment rate go higher. You're going to see conditions, GDP come down, growth coming down. It's going to continue to come down while we have rates this high and we continue to raise. And when Powell gets dovish, which he will in September, we'll likely see a 15% plus rise across the board in the major indices. 15%. 15%. You might say, 15%, Frank, you're out of your mind. You lost it. You're crazy. Well, let's put it in perspective. Because if the NASDAQ rises by 15% from these levels, it puts it at a little over 13,000. Which, after that 15% rise, which I'm predicting, it's still going to be 20% below its 52-week high of, what was it, 16,200? A little bit higher than that. So even if NASDAQ stocks or growth stocks which are probably going to surge more than anything, right? Because that's the high-risk stuff. And when we see a broad market rally, that's called high beta. Those are going to go a lot higher than the overall market. So they can go up 25%, 30%. You'd think these moves are crazy. Look at energy in the past month. Yes, the last couple of days it went up. 25 35% pullback in less than 30 days in those stocks. But if we see a 15% rise in the NASDAQ, we're still going to be 20% off its lows. That's how far we have come down. So yes, things are shitty. Things are bad. Yes, you're reading headlines of recession. Oh my God, inflation, you're crazy. The market is pricing this in. It's down a ton to the point where banks are steals here. You can buy Goldman with a 3% yield, trading at dirt cheap valuations where they have systems that front run the market where the trading is going to explode forever in terms of profits. And this is a company where investment banking did not matter at all for them to beat their estimates. Think about that for a minute. They're the king of investment bank revenue. So you're going to see a lot of new recommendations going into my Curzio Research Advisory newsletter and also Curzio Venture Opportunity newsletters in the coming weeks and months in Curzio Research Advisory, which I published last week. I held off because it's earnings season. So I don't want to recommend something that could fall 10% in a day. I said earlier, as most CEOs are going to be cautious. You're going to see some companies get hit with a dollar. You'll probably get them a little cheaper because I don't know if that's factored in. It wasn't factored in for IBM. IBM's quarter is pretty good. It's just... You saw a big hit to profits because they operate in... Seriously, like a hundred... 70 countries, whatever. <laughs> and they own everything nowadays, right? Weather.com, whatever. They own everything. <laughs> I don't get how that's part of their business model, but you get my point. Going into earnings season where you're going to see Jamie Dimon like. Where, hey, we're on, it's certain. It, it, it's you know, going to see people cut back. I'm going to issue cautious guidance. We're going to increase our loan loss reserves. Like That's what you're going to hear. I mean, not loan loss reserves, but you're going to hear that going forward. You're hearing from Apple, Microsoft. You're going to hear from Google. Hey, we're slow and hiring. We just want to be careful through this. You might see a couple of companies report good earnings and surge, like we saw with Citigroup or whatever. But you know what? You don't want to buy ahead of a quarter when you know a CEO is probably going to say, most likely, that he's going to offer cautious guidance. 
I'm just talking about hold off for maybe a week or two. That's it. After that, you're going to see lots of new recommendations in my newsletters. They're trading at dirt cheap valuations. The Fed in September is going to go dovish because you're seeing it right now without these two rate hikes coming, the effects of what happens when you raise rates by this amount. And you're seeing it in a lot of different areas. You cooled off housing, which is almost impossible to cool off. And you cooled off housing. You did a great job. So earnings season, most of these companies are going to report over the next two weeks. But expect to see lots of new recommendations in both of these newsletters for your subscribers. I know. I'm optimistic. Can't believe it. You're watching all these TV programs and you want to throw the TV out the window and you can't watch it. Especially financial media. and Everything's so bad. How can I be optimistic when the entire world hates stocks, hates bonds, hates everything right now? Why? Because as you know, you've been listening to me or following me, I'm a contrarian. I hate being on the side as everyone else. When you are, chances are, you're going to be wrong. You might be early to the party, but that's when you make the most profits. And right now, I'm picking away. Because when I see fund managers' expectations for global growth and profits are at all-time lows, not five-year lows, not 10-year lows, all-time lows, when cash levels for these fund managers are at the highest in over 20 years where they're going to have to find a home and there's a lot of stocks that are trading cheap that make a lot of sense right now, especially at the Fed announced September that, hey, we're going we're gonna to slow down a little bit. Because, man, we're seeing it across almost every single industry of how inflation is moderating. Outside of food, that might take a little bit longer, but we're seeing it across many industries. When we haven't seen it at all across any industries, we're seeing it a lot. But when I see equity allocations to lowest level since the Lehman bankruptcy in 2008, that's the time I want to invest. That's why I'm getting aggressive. I'm picking away. I'm not buying any stocks that are reporting this week or next week. I just want to be cautious. Even though expectations are low and estimates have come down, they're probably going to offer conservative guidance like they should because there's a lot of uncertainty. And some of these companies are going to hit because of the dollar being higher, especially over the past couple of months. And not to mention in that survey in Bank of America showing that that's the trade. Everybody is long the dollar which means that trade is going to unwind. So if we do see the dollar come down, that unwinds. We're going to see eh, a bump up in energy, which we're seeing, a bump up in gold, which we're seeing today, right? Because the dollar's easing. But overall, if you look at a long-term picture, it's going to be bumpy over the next couple of months, but start buying now. In 18 months, almost any stock that you're going to buy right now is going to be higher. That's my prediction. Hold me to it.